funny game, Rugby League, and it last week had a 100% completion rate in the first half. Didn't, uh, didn't score. Fun, maybe not with the word I'm looking for at the moment. But funny. 100% completion rate first half against Salford, I think you said. Didn't score a point. Yesterday, you dropped a load of ball, did a load of tackling in the first half, yeah. and, and 22 4 up. It's, you've, you've got to find the right balance. Well, it's, 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 it's just strange. Oh, just had a little bit of attacking edge, and there were two or three things in there that let us down. I think basically, what, what we were good at yesterday was that. We just responded. Our attitude was really positive, and everything we did. You can live with some some errors involved in the game when you're trying to when you're trying to play. A couple of offloads, some lost balls. You just need to, like I said, just understand the difference between fearless and reckless. And that's the big thing that we drive into. Them. But what we did was we backed ourselves to want to put some energy into our defensive effort, and we did. Like I said we defended our goal line really well on the back of that. And we end up getting some good rewards out of the back of some good, tr real positive transition. I think, like you say, the first try and then the next try was on the on the back of a um, an opportunity that Hull almost scored in a corner. Our transition to the seven tackles and Reese going through on an offload because we were quick to the ball. And then, when you want to be first to ball, you're usually first to ball. When you want to get on the front foot, you can get on the front foot. When you run into two sides that. A both feeling like that, they end up with a, with a fantastic game. Yesterday in the, the first half, I thought we have, we have, we had the jump on Hull. In the second half, they got the jump on us. Just going back to your goal line defence, you've had a few issues with it this season. Hull, if, if there's ever a team made for scoring from close range, it looks like Hull, doesn't it, with the size they got in their team. But in that first half, you give them some ball, but we pelled it I, all the time. Again, it's, it's, it's a real tough one because lads are. The lads are working hard, but there's a difference between how you feel if you're working hard enough or you think you're working hard enough and the attitude to really put yourself on the line. I think we've had that balance this year where we've, we've worked and put some effort in, but it's not been enough. I mean, like, how, how much pain can you take and how much how hard can you work? It's wanting to step over that line and be real, really uncomfortable with yourself. I think that's what we've not pushed ourselves to enough times this year. That effort, and I thought in the first half is today. Goal line days about attitude, we practice it all the time, and it's things that you. But you've got to be willing to really work hard. You've got to be willing to push from the inside. You've got to be willing to when you hit, you got to stick, and you've got to hold on, and you got to make that contact that really could be painful, because everything matters because that white line's behind you. I think we showed that in the first half. Is today, and we didn't really have to. We didn't defend our goal line once in the second half. This, we sort of defended theirs, <laughs> and then they scored from five ten metres out of their own line. Um, they got they got a couple of players in their side that we <coughs> spoke about in a, uh, before the game that can that can hurt you, and that's the attention to detail and focus and and being on the on the beat when Kelly gets the ball, when Sneed gets the ball, when Shaw gets the ball, when Tim Vardy gets the ball, when Fanua gets the ball. <laughs> Anything can happen around those kind of players, and in the second half, I think um, Kelly just it looked like he was dead in his feet twice, and he came back and exploded into action and scored and created a created a try and scored a try. The uh, Wellington this week, the cup, Dennis, different uh, kettle of fish, I suppose, in many ways. But that defeat, the nature of that defeat, that getting into with a big lead and, and didn't giving that lead up, or, or them coming back and taking the lead, will that have an effect on your confidence going into this game? Do you think? Oh, it depends how we handle today and the next couple of days. Really, I think. <coughs> well, we, we sat out last week and we had a real good chat with the group about doing certain things better and understanding it wasn't going to turn around in one week. So how we apply ourselves now and what we can carry on from what we did really well last week and the attitude we carried into our training and our our application during the week came to the fore at the start of the game, came to the fore in the first half and I'll be told, it's, like I said, we, we did some good stuff in the second half, we just looked like a side that was just hanging in there. Mm. We still had a bit of work to do and like I said, for them to score full length tries, it wasn't about, it was just that we thought we had a minute because we put them where we wanted to put them and, and you can't do that at this level. If you want to beat a top sky at the side, you've got to recognise that it's, it's an 80 minute game. And we've put three or four really good 40 minutes together. It's just that we haven't got any rewards for those really good 40 minutes at the only time. And the Warrington game won't, it's, it's, it's a massive game. It's it's one of those things where you can actually look at the season and think, this is where our season hinges now. 
are we going to win the grand final? No, we're not going to win the grand final. We're going to look into trying to make the eight. Yeah, we've still got a possibility of mathematically making the eight if we go on some fantastic run. But well, the one thing that offers us now of something and giving something to our supporters and giving something back to this club is the Challenge Cup. Um, and not what better way to start it than against um, our biggest rivals. I don't know if you saw, if you've had a chance with you, you've been away, to see Warrington's game against Saints last week. But for 20 minutes, the problems that Warrington had for the start of the season all seemed to be present. But then when they clicked into gear and played really direct, and that's when I think they're at the best. They look like a side that can beat anyone when they get there. Well, they, they did. Uh, St. Helens had a little bit of luck what we did, and they started really well. In the first half, like I said, I think it was a 30 odd minutes gone, <coughs> and it's 50, yeah, I think it was end up there in 14 0. And then, then Warrington sort of found something just towards the end of the half. They ended up sneaking over for a couple of tries. Builds their confidence to get out the second half from a completely different team. And like I said, even down reflection, you look at that and how we, how we approach each section of the game through a 20 minute section. That's where how we get our focus and attention to detail at the start of the game, after 20, when wherever we are, start of the second half. Those kind of moments are going to be telling in such a big game. And if you can't get up for these kind of games, and you're in the wrong game, really. I think that's that's the message this week. And I think the players already after after the game yesterday, we could we sensed them sort of felt sorry for ourselves, moped around for a good 30, 40 minutes, and then just some individual chats with the players. They, they recognised that there was some good stuff in yesterday, and now we need to build on that and, and really put performance together this week. Um, Warrington work hard, don't they, on, on getting that speed of the play of the ball every team does I'm sure but Warrington when they get on that roll that seems to be their forte doesn't they jumping out of dummy half and really getting the first couple of tackles going to get the set going yeah I mean, they've, they've built a side to do that I say that's something that's worked really well from Matty Russell Steph Ratchford Ryan Atkins they're all pretty good at that kind of stuff as well and Reese Evans they've worked really hard at getting out of there and then like Chris Hill coming onto the ball on the back of that and then if he's fit Clark or Dwyer getting out from dummy half and giving a platform for for them to play off the back of that in good field position. So once they get you going backwards then good players. I just saw on yesterday, once you once you're on the back foot, you get one on one with a good player who's got good footwork, it becomes really hard to stop them. I think that's what Warrington are looking for, to get you on the back foot to then give the ball to the players that can beat you one on one. Uh, anyone, uh, we know Bridge went off injured yesterday, is that it, what do you think the likely scenario is for them? I can't week? see Bridgie being right, he spent last night in hospital, right. so he was, um, he was pretty bad and ju I, just a bad concussion, so precautionary more than anything else, but they kept him in overnight just to make sure that everything was good on monitoring him, so I, like he's out of, the, out of the system straight away, like I said, he's a six day protocol, but that protocol is supposed to start today, and straight after the game. Couple of days recovery, but I say I'd be very, very surprised if he's um, anywhere near the team this weekend because of um, what happened then. We're still waiting on a couple of reports back from the, the officials, but hopefully, and like I say, I'm not. I'd, usually, I get a couple of early calls and I get a call after the game late on. I had none of that, so I'm hopeful that everybody's up for selection available. And I think you said yesterday Corey Thompson won't be properly. No, Corey's not right. Like I said, he's in a he's in a brace at the moment, and he will be in a brace for another couple of weeks.